Hello everybody, we learned so many things so far and hopefully you still keep keep up with it. And uh, so and I guess I have a good routine, follow the uh, follow the videos. You don't have to watch all the video in one day to separate into small pieces to make sure you finish it by the due date, especially by the attendance check. So all the video are created is closely connected with the learning objective, uh, your homework, your exams. And so by putting effort on watching video, follow the video, and actually going to make your learning more efficient. So in this video, we're going to look at uh, the next concept in chapter three, that is finding outliers. So outlier usually is a problem because I run in so many models. Sometimes you run, you try so many different methods, and you still end up the wrong results, and your diagnostics still very far off, no matter how you train your model. So then you always can find the main problem is the data you collected has some outliers. So in this class, we only uh, we will learn a very basic method. As you got the opportunity to learn more advanced statistics or be in an analytic class, you actually can learn more method to identify outliers, like leverage, etc. So in this class, we only focus on a very basic method. It's using the standardized value. So using the standardized value. So I'm sure you take a statistics, you heard this word called the standardized or z-score. So basically, we are going to converting our data to a z-score, and based on the economic, based on the statistics theory, and we will be able to identify which data is a potential outlier. Potential outlier. So let's look at it together. What is the z-score? Just in case you guys forget about it. So what is z-score? So the z-score is often called the standardized value. That actually is how Excel is going to call it. So the Excel will call it a standardized value instead of a z-score. So what you have in this, uh, if, in order to get your z-score, what you need to have is, so you need to, you need to have the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. So you basically using each observation minus the all observation use your auto observation sorry use all the observation calculate the mean and then use all the observation calculate the standard deviation and then use each observation minus the mean divided by the standard deviation and then you convert your original observation x to this z score to this z score so i will show you the manual method to calculate it just example please uh, we don't use this formula to do the calculation. We actually have ex uh, Excel already have a well-developed formula to help us to calculate the standardized uh, z-score. Uh, so later when we look at the computer skill part, you will learn which formula you can actually gonna use to calculate uh, to find a z-score. So, uh, so for instance, this apartment rent, so the 17 college apartment, we look at this example in the previous videos. And so we calculate the mean, uh, the average cost is $525. Is that how much you charge? Mm, I don't know. When I was student in Washington State, my rent uh, initially, oh uh, yeah, my rent was $500. And then, then I started to move into campus, uh, campus building, they become like $350, so I actually get cheaper. But anyway, so for this 70 observation, we calculate the average of $525, and the standard deviation we calculate uh, 54.74. So let's see the first observation is 590.80. Oh, sorry. So the average is $590.80. So that's average. So the first observation we see in the data, uh, we, uh, it was uh, 525. And then we're using the z-score formula to calculate it. We got negative 1.2. So then we do the same thing for the rest of the observation. So the table I'm showing you here is a standardized uh, uh, standardized value. So I can very quickly show you the original data. So this is the original data, So which is a few slides ago, and we saw it. So you can see the first observation is 525. And after we use the standardized formula to standardize it, I convert it to z-score. So this is my z-score, OK? So why does this score is important? Because we're actually going to use this score to help us identify the outliers. So how can we identify the outliers? Before I give you the, uh, the conclusion, I have to explain why, right? That's always a good way to help you to understand. <clears throat> so I'm going to move a little bit fast because later we're going to go back to the computer skill and you'll be able to learn how to use a z-score to calculate the, uh, the Excel to calculate z-score. 
So to help you understand the rationale to find the outlier, we have to mention a theory called the Chip Theory. So Chip Theory is based on boundary experiment on data. And then they notice that uh, no matter what kind of uh, distribution you're working on, so within two standard deviation, and you will have 75% of the data should be in it. Within three standard deviation, you have 89% of the data should be in it. Within four standard deviation, you should have 94% data in it. So what does that mean? That means if you have any data is outside of four standard deviation, that will be considered as a weird data, which means it's going to be outlier. They shouldn't belong to this group. So that is temperature theory. And so for the z-score, we're actually going to use empirical rule. So the empirical rule is the special case for the chapter theory. So empirical rule will be able to work on any bell-shaped distribution. So what is bell-shaped distribution? Uh, let me change in my pen. So what is bell-shaped distribution? Like that. So this is bell-shaped distribution, basically like your normal distribution, right? Your normal distribution, the T distribution, gamma distribution, they were all bell-shaped. So uh, the, uh, the, there's a law of the large numbers that if you have large enough sample size, everything will become normal distribution. So that's why there are so many statistics theory involved. We are not go that further, further but I just want to like, show you this empirical rule. So this empirical rule, <clears throat> we just basically look at the conclusion of the empirical rule. So the empirical rule is dealing with any bell shape distribution, such as normal distribution. And so look at the last conclusion. 99.72% of value of a normal random variable within positive and negative three standard deviation of its mean. So basically, you draw this normal distribution. What you will find is within this three standard deviation, you should have almost all the observation within that. So within three standard deviation, you should have all of your normal observation. So if you do find an observation that is outside your three standard deviation, that will be considered abnormal, right? If it's abnormal, that will be considered an outlier, either too large or too small. So this is the rationale going to guide us to finding our outliers. So how this empirical rule and our z-score connected? So if you still have to remember a little bit from your stat 260, so the z-score is coming from the standard normal distribution. So in chapter 6, we're going to talk about more about standard normal distribution. So what is the standard normal distribution means? So the standard normal distribution is the mean equal to 0, the standard deviation equal to 1. So basically, the mu value equal to 0 and the sigma value equal to 1. So let's think about this way, okay? So this bell shaped distribution is a standard normal distribution. So within three standard deviation, we should have uh, almost all my observation within that, right? So if it's a standard normal distribution, this boundary will become negative three, right? Zero minus three times one equal to negative three. And this upper boundary here, mu equal to zero, sigma equal to one. So this is the definition of the standard normal distribution, okay? So then this becomes three. So basically, if you have z-score, if the data is normal, it has to be between negative three and a positive three. So therefore, negative three and a positive three become the threshold to help us to understand whether the observation is an outlier or not. So that's the right formally. So an outlier is, usual, is an unusual small or unusually large value in a data set. A data value with a z-score less than 3 or greater than positive 3 might be considered as an outlier. So basically, if you go back to the, this chart again, so if we have any value at this area or at this area, we will consider them as outlier because this empirical rule tell us almost all the observations should be between negative 3 and a positive 3. If it is outside this range, that will be considered as outlier. So that is how this conclusion comes from. So when you work on the empirical data, especially you guys are going to be in the business world, so I hope you understand why we chose 
this threshold as our threshold to identify outlier. If not, please memorize it, okay? So first of all, you have to convert all your data to z-score, and then to look at which one is larger than 3 or smaller than 3. So that will be considered outliers. So if you do find outlier in your data, potential outlier, what are you going to do? Go back to look at the reason why you have outlier. So it might be because incorrectly record data value. So for instance, you have typo. It's supposed to be 100. You by accident type 1 more 0, become 1,000. So obviously, that will be a very weird number in your data, right? So it should be 100, become 1,000. And also a data value that was incorrectly included in the data set. So maybe this data is belong to a different sample group and put in the different sample groups, and then they'll become a data value that was incorrectly included in the data set. And so although it's a correct data, recorded data value that belongs to the data set, but keep in mind, people answer your question now might be lying. So for instance, you are asking your friend, what's your GPA? I'm unless you're a super good friend or he or she has a super high GPA or it's different kinds of literature. So people have hesitated to tell each other about their GPA. So you might not get, get the right answer. So people might lie on their answer too. So although it's a correctly recorded data value and it belongs to the right data set, but people who answer the question might lie in them, might create an outlier as well. So therefore, there are so many reasons to lead to the outliers. And so you usually we don't delete the data. Data is very valuable. We will go back to look at what's the reason behind it. If it's an unrecoverable mistake, if you have relatively larger data set, you try to delete it. And sometimes we actually using other variable to predict the value for this outlier as well. So there are so many different techniques to handle outliers. Uh, the deleting the outlier is not the first choice. Okay, deleting outlier is not our first choice. And so after we look at the, uh, how to get a z-score, how we use a z-score to find outlier. And so we can look at this data set again. So this is the 70 apartment collected from the college town and we convert to z-score. So look at this data set. Do we have any outliers? Remember the threshold, okay? Negative 3 and a positive 3. So the data here is ordered based from the smallest to the largest value. So the smallest is negative 1.2, and the largest is 2.27. Obviously, none of them is out of range. Therefore, we won't have any outlier in this case. So we don't have any outlier. 